I'm just thinking about technology and biology and robots and machines and those kind of things. As it was, I'm brought to this because I was thinking about Hans Moravec a couple of days ago, who is a roboticist. And he had a book out it was quite a few years ago now, called, I think it was called Mind Children, something like that. But the idea of this book was that, uh, that the future, our future evolution, would not be in the form of biology. At a certain point in the future, we'd kind of hand over um, the responsibility for the development of our, well, just development full stop, to the, to the machines that we create. You know, we'd, we'd invest more and more in our machines and the robots, and we'd have, um, an in, and that investment would be much more to do with, uh, not more of an emotional investment, but also a, uh, a sense that these things are a continuation of ourselves. You know, they're not just tools, and it's just kind of the way we use them now. But they have a a more intimate relationship to embodiment and to being than current robots have, and that, as, you know, and at a certain point we would just kind of step aside, and our robot children, our mind children, as he calls them, would just continue. Uh, you know, it wouldn't be like a, like a Terminator future where the robots rise up and kill us. As I say, it would be much more a much gentler process of handing the baton over to silicon because carbon's kind of done its thing, really. Uh, I was thinking about that. I, quite, I like the idea of it, I have to say. I don't, I don't hold that much hope in happening, but I quite like the idea of it. But I'm kind of thinking, what, what would it be like? You know, what, not what would it be like from a human's point of view, but what would robot history look like? You know, if that did happen over the next 300 years, let's say, and uh, possibly less than that, but let's say 300, give it plenty of time, and then in... A thousand years, or two thousand, or ten thousand years' time, what kind of history would the robots be writing? How would they see this moment in their history, which is, I guess, you know, the beginnings of that process? Uh, you know, how would they talk about this epoch? I don't think they would be doing the things that we tend to think they do. You know, the things that they do in Isaac Asimov's stuff, you know, his science fiction writing, where the robot sees its uh, it's, it's human makers as some kind of father figure, either in a positive way, as I say in Asimov, or as a, in a negative way that you see in kind of Frankenstein versions. Um, I don't think it would have that kind of relationship, certainly in, a, in five or ten thousand years, I just can't imagine it. I think it would be much more like, well, I, I just think it would be more of ignoring it almost. You know, because from a robot's perspective, this moment... You know, imagine in this 10,000 years in the future, let's say, you've got these robots that can think a thousand times faster than we can now, or we already can, but consistently. They can think of a thousand things at once. They can multitask in a way that we just can't even imagine. They've got lifespans of measurable in the thousands of years, infinitely interchangeable. They've got connections with other robots around them and to the, and to the, uh, the environment that we can't even imagine yet. They've got all this stuff going on. Let's go this way, Phoebes. Come on. Uh, and they look back and, and what is this moment to them? You know, it, it, it isn't the moment in which these sophisticated biological organisms start to, um, you know, start to mess about with early machines. Because we wouldn't be sophisticated from their perspective. It would be the moment when, uh, when silicon life forms, from their perspective, start to arise out of some kind of primordial biological soup. You know, when, uh, when technology starts to emerge out of biology. In the same way that we talk about the beginnings of biological life, you know, whatever it was four billion years ago, four and a half billion years ago, you know, we talk about this primordial soup of chemistry and physics and how this, the workings of the physics and the chemistry sort of gives rise to, to biology, you know, through the, com through the creation of complex chemical compounds that can combine in certain ways and have, and have certain properties. You know, I think they would talk in similar ways, that the, the, the sea of biology that they're emerging out of has, has got these properties which um, give rise to silicon-based entities, really early ones, you know, the really early ones would be so simple. This would be the, the, you know, the Sinclair ZX Spectrums, or the uh, Acorns, and the Commodores, and all those kind of things, the really early thing. They'd be talking about these as the progenitors of, of, uh, of future technological life, coming out of the super biology. 
we would just be part of the, the, the natural order. The, the, as I say, the kind of background noise that produced that thing. We wouldn't be their fathers or their uh, inventors or the creators in any meaningful sense. We wouldn't, from their perspective, be worthy of that kind of honour, I don't think. I think it's, uh, I for one, welcome our ant overlords, our robot overlords. It'd be quite good, couldn't it, I think, you know, if this period of biology is just seen as a, a little flicker of, uh, in some ways quite regrettable, but in some ways quite interesting, uh, a little interlude before technology really kicked off. And it was probably looked at in that regard, you know, in the same way that we looked at physics and chemistry. It's quite interesting, very interesting. But uh, the future is technology, maybe. Because when you say that, you know, you sound like you've been terribly 1950s and science fiction about it, don't you? But I'm not talking about technology in, uh, in 1950s terms. I'm not talking about Carol Chapek kind of robots. I'm talking about robots that would, you know, make this stuff look simple. Robots that would make this level of complexity, or the level of complexity of the thing that lies under this hat, appear really simple. You know, because these things, these things go up in complexity, don't they? You know, physics is far simpler than chemistry. Chemistry is far simpler than biology. And by the same token, Biology should be, at some point, far simpler than the technology which supersedes it. That'd be nice. I would happily have children like that, lots of them. <laughs>